Toms are always a tricky element to balance because you need them to punch through the mix yet still sound cohesive with the rest of the drums. And in this clip, Kellen shows you how he combines small and subtle moves to create a larger than life tom sound. Check it out and enjoy. To trigger um, all of these drums, instead of using audio, I'm just triggering with MIDI um, and it's come out of old school Steven Slate Drums 4. And so I don't have any of the cymbals loaded. It's just three toms, even though I didn't use this tom. It's just basically two toms, kick and a snare. Probably a weird fill. Let me find a better spot for you guys. So I'm fairly certain these are just the Steven Slate sample. Yep. So you got quick tom three with the, the Steven Slate room on it. Uh, and I was pitching that one up pretty high. And then the floor tom is quick tom four. We all are. <laughs> and then, yeah, quick tom four. I didn't pitch that one at all. I wanted some toms that were bright. The live toms were fine, but I just wanted something, like I said, more exaggerated, something that just popped out a bit more. So I'll play this spot here for you. I'll take all these plugins off. So without. That's fine. Not bad. Uh, we're doing a little bit of this soft tube saturation, but instead of doing it up on high like I was on the snare, we're doing it just in neutral. So without. With. This is a really cool saturation plugin, even just like a tiny bit, just kind of like, <clears throat> kind of does the same thing that Saturn does, but to me, it just sounds a little different. Yeah, just a little bit of sparkle on the top. It's pretty subtle. Uh, and this, I think, is the Slate Digital Transient Shaper. Using pump, yes. Yeah, so this little pump thing is kind of like, it kind of like ducks. Yeah, you can see it. It kind of like ducks the middle of the body and gives you more attack and late sustain. So I was just doing like a tiny bit of that. A little bit of attack. About it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Honestly, I never mess with the speed thing on there. I just, I think that just sets to default. I would assume it just clips it at zero dBs right here. I don't think it's doing much. Yeah, it's pretty subtle. And then we're doing some EQ. So let me take this guy off. To me, it kind of just makes it like a bit rounder sounding. I was just pulling some of that slap out. There's like a little too much of this stuff. A little too slappy. And this is some of that like weird, weird area on toms that sometimes you need, but it can get like too, I don't know what the word is. It's just like, it's too much. Kah, 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 kah. So I was just pulling a little bit of that out. And we're pulling out some mid range. And some of these lows, Let's pop this up. It's like that weird resonance, pulling that out a little bit. This decision was probably pretty random. Yeah, not doing a whole lot. It's kind of the doot, 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 doot. Just didn't really need it. And then this is close. Yeah, it seems like it's not exactly the fundamental of the tom, but it's pretty close. I think I wanted it just like a little bit, like the note was too much and I didn't want to boost more of the note. So I wanted like a little bit more low end of the note. Uh, and I found that like when doing a low cut like that, I don't really understand the science behind it, but generally like the steeper you make it, the more it kind of like boosts whatever it's next to. So if you were to like make it really strict, it'll sound different compared to 24 as opposed to and not having it on all is pretty subtle too but it's there yeah just makes it to me it sounds a little bit rounder and then we're doing some saturn probably just for the top yep just this stuff kind of same thing we did with the kick adding some drive just all that stuff that high sparkle yeah it's a little air to it uh, good old Transify, we're back again. And each one we're clipping, doing a little bit of attack on this top and a little bit of attack on the low, pulling some of that sustain out. I'll bypass that. Yeah, it makes it a little slappier. 
Sounds cool. I like those toms a lot. Yeah, they are cool. Uh, and then good old JST clip. Even though we're already clipping it, just clip it more. Might as well. I mean, why not? <laughs> See, now it's like with the clipper on it, it sounds like somebody's just like smacking the shit out of it. Sometimes I'll pipe the the tom rooms into like the same other drum room, but this one I, I think it's just routing to the same. Let's see, yeah. So I'm just sending it there to the same output. So that's your quick tom three, and then quick tom four. Get rid of these guys. I hear it like on the room, kind of on the tail. Play that again. I want to listen for the tail again. So without. It's with. Yep. There's totally. a little tiny bit on there. Yeah. Again, all a lot of this stuff's pretty subtle because everything else is not subtle. All the well, other. You know, what's important about this subtle stuff is like to direct people where to listen to. Because if they don't like, I didn't know that what you're listening for is the tail right yeah. there, that that's where it really is noticeable. But like to me, that tail is actually night and day. The way that it, it hits the transient or whatever, or the body of it was super subtle, barely noticeable. However, on that tail, it's like super different. Yeah, and, and the thing too is like when you run, because everybody does it differently, when you're running like a, a tom sample, some people like to have it just by itself or some people do it with like the rooms or the overhead samples as well. And since I did it all into one channel on this one, you, you know, if, if you start automating toms up and down, well, then you're also automating the rooms up and, you know, you're pulling those up and down. So I just wanted to try and safeguard against that by just pull, automatically pulling out some of that tail and since the snare itself has already so much like room ring on this little room sample i wanted to try and bring out the same kind of vibe on the toms and then so with the low tom we're doing the pretty much the same thing with this transient shaper you know clipping at zero db i didn't touch the speed just a little bit of attack there's no pump on this one not messing with the sustain yeah it's a little bit slappier Pretty tiny amount, similar kind of EQ stuff going on with this guy. It already, I mean, it already sounds good without EQ. So yeah, we're just pulling out some of this junk that we don't need. Yeah, you just don't really need that. And for some reason, I was putting a little bit of this in 778. Let's see without it. It's pretty minimal. Probably honestly would have been fine without it, but that was it to me. It sounded good at the time. Uh, um, and then we're doing some high end stuff like that real high. And yeah, really slappy stuff. I think I, at the time I wanted like more, you know, like two to like five or so, as opposed to this really sparkly stuff. And then what we got going on here? Kind of just like some funny low stuff. He has a hoo. -hoo. There's like a weird ring to it. So I was just, just notching a little bit of that out. And then again, just kind of close to the fundamental. But again, sometimes, you know, with snares and toms, like if you boost the fundamental, it pokes out too much. And so I'll just go like slightly below it or above the fundamental. And if I want it to sound a little bit higher or a little bit lower, the same kind of idea. And then just cutting some ultra low sub. I just didn't really need it. And it kind of tightens it up a little bit. Uh, and then we're rocking some Saturn, probably doing the same thing. Oh, we're doing. Okay, cool. So without it. Yeah, so just throwing a little bit of saturation on the low end. Take that. I, I like it. A little bit more note to it, and then some of this top smack stuff. And then not doing anything here in the middle. I feel like that's pretty, this whole setup is pretty standard nowadays with Toms. <laughs> with Saturn. Saturn is great. I mean, there is that. Is that? Is this the, the Eric Valentine thing that everybody is doing now? I, I think we all owe it to him. 
I don't know, honestly. I don't know what the Eric Valentine thing is. I just know that Buster Odeholm actually, uh, as far as the Nail the Mix URM world goes, mm -hmm. Buster's Nail the Mix, I think in February of 2020, Humanity's Last Breath in Phil mm. Jarda, I believe. Um, and he just used the shit out of Saturn and yeah. it was an eye-opening thing. So it's not that no one's used it before, but he he like really, really used it a lot. And that's kind of when it, at least through our neck of the woods and yeah. our influence on the scene, I feel like the, the Buster stuff is when it... What, he, what Buster does with Saturn is wild. <laughs> I, I've I've tried to replicate that and I can't, I can't get it to be the same. In, in the chat, they just said Buster mentioned Eric Valentine. See, oh, thank okay. you, yeah, yeah. thank you, Christopher. In the chat, Nolly also used it and he credited Eric Valentine. This is what they're yep. saying. Buster is in the chat. Okay, hello, Buster. We What's love you. App? But uh, yeah, Buster just said he got it from Eric. Yep. Saturn's great for that, especially on Tom's. Pretty much probably the same moves here, like pulling back a little bit of sustain and then just like a little bit of slap on top and slap on the bottom. Pull that out. Yeah, pretty tiny amount. And the clippers are on. It just sounds a little bit more finished to me. And then, of course, got to clip it again. Because why not? Why not? And now they're beefy. So that's pretty simple on the toms, not a whole lot to it. Sometimes I'll, if I'm doing like MIDI drum triggers like that, I'll even just put trick, like a, I'll do like with the snares, I'll put trigger and maybe use some GGD toms or some drum forge toms or something else. But in this case, this one seemed to, these toms seem to fit the best. 